Okay, next topic is rasterization. So rasterization means which pixels are we going to turn on? And we have to turn those, those things on. And how is that going to look? This is what we mean by rasterization. So here I said we're going to run our ver vertex shader on this first element. And so after we run our vertex shader on our three corners of our triangle, we still have to fill in all this stuff. So somewhere we have to make up all the pixels and what goes in these pixels, where is that coming from? The graphics card is gonna do it for us. We do not have to write the code to decide which pixels to turn on. Based on the location on the screen and the screen resolution, et cetera, the graphics card is gonna decide which of these to turn on. And then it's gonna run a fragment shader for each of these. So we already ran a vertex shader at the three corners. Now we're gonna run a fragment shader on each of these points. So which ones actually get turned on? That's what we're trying to talk about here in, in rasterization. So here's drawn big so that we can see some of the problems that come up. So here's a triangle. Let's start with this one. In this drawing, okay, it's a little confusing what's a pixel. So in this drawing, pixels are squares and we're gonna call our sampling point to be the middle of the pixel. And so one rule for how to decide which pixels to turn on is, if the sampling point is inside the triangle, you should turn on. So this is on, this is on, this is on, this is on, right? But this, this pixel here, even though the triangle crosses it, my sample point is outside, so I don't draw. But this leads to some additional questions. So this one is right on the line. This one is right on the line. So what are we gonna do? when pixels fall right on the line. Well, we have to make up a rule. So if I ask you what rule to make up, some people are gonna say, well, forget it. If it's on the line, just draw it. And some people say, if it's on the line, just don't draw it. Well, don't draw it is gonna create trouble. So if you consider this case of two triangles here, where the line goes right down the middle, if I choose don't draw, no, nobody's gonna turn these pixels on. So I'm gonna have a line down the middle of what should be a complete shape. So that's not desirable. So we don't want don't draw. But if you consider um, the opposite rule, please do draw, then what's gonna happen is this top triangle is gonna turn on all these pixels and it's gonna hit all these pixels. And then this bottom triangle is gonna hit all these pixels again and draw them again. Now, I'm not so worried about the efficiency, but this can create errors in our drawing. Suppose we're drawing 50% transparent triangles on top of something else. So if I draw this one at 50% transparent and overlay it on top of whatever was already there, and then draw this one at 50% transparent and overlay it, these pixels are gonna be 50% plus another 50%, and this will probably get multiplied, so it'll be more like 75%, not 100%. But nevertheless, this line will have a different coloration than the rest of the triangle. So that's not also desirable. So rasterization, we like to have a rule which says every pixel which is covered by our shape, right? If I have some larger shape covered by a bunch of triangles, every pixel got hit exactly once. So we typically have some kind of rule like a top left rule. So this pixel's on the left, so we're gonna turn it on. This pixel's on the top, so we're gonna don't turn it on. So here in this triangle, um, or maybe it's on the right, so we don't turn it on right, because here it was on the top, so we turned it on. Well, anyway, the point being, we have to be consistent in our rules so that each pixel is hit exactly once. Now, why am I not specifying this exactly carefully? So 10 years ago when we taught this class, we talked about this in extreme detail, and one of the assignments was, here's a triangle, go find out which pixels to turn on. Well, my judgment is, is no longer relevant. Uh, it's done for us down in the driver level. Unless you're writing the drivers, you don't need to know exactly how the different pixels get turned on. But you do need to know that the graphics card is doing this for you. It's choosing. So between your vertex shader and your fragment shader, it's choosing which things to turn on. And there's a couple of artifacts that do come into play, even though you don't have to know exactly how the choices are made. So let's consider this triangle here, um, as well as these triangles here. So they've turned on how many pixels? They've turned on exactly zero pixels. Well, that's pretty weird. I drew a triangle and nothing got turned on. In fact, here's another one pretty nearby and nothing got turned on. If I draw a lot of these little guys, maybe I'm gonna get no pixels on my screen turned on. Can that possibly be right? It's in fact right. This is the way your graphics card works. If I draw a long skinny triangle, it can mostly fall between the pixels. This one was turned on by this upper triangle, not by this one. So this long skinny triangle turns on nothing. 
And this is what you would expect. And if this triangle starts to move across the screen, it's going to get to a point where it turns on these pixels. And then it's going to get to another point, and it's going to flash off and turn off some other pixels. So this is a weird behavior if you start drawing tiny little triangles. And in fact, you will see this. Um, you can experiment with this. In your next assignment, you're going to start to, to be drawing triangles, and you'll be able to, to try this out. Just set some long, skinny triangles and watch what happens. You can get them between the pixels where, where they don't show up. So why do we have this? Why is this desirable? Because it's considered not as bad as this double drawing or forgetting to draw issue. So having a strict rule about what gets turned on is considered better. It can create weird effects. So here's a question. I found this thing on, um, on uh, one of these question asking sites. And so they said, well, here's my triangle. And when I get skinnier and skinnier, look at this. It's not a triangle anymore. I got a bunch of dots and things disappear. This is exactly what we were ta just talking about, right? This, is, this, this can happen. If you start drawing these skinny triangles, you can see effects that look like this. So this is definitely something that you can see. Okay, so now questions on this topic. So I see that there's one question um, that says, so if I up my poly count, my my models will disappear. So that's a great question. So as I up my poly count, my triangles get smaller and smaller. So that means a large fraction of my triangles will not turn on pixels. However, if you, let's consider this, this, this object here drawn by these three largest triangles. Suppose I subdivide them a lot. So I have you know, a thousand tiny little triangles inside of, of this triangle and a thousand tiny little triangles inside this triangle. I've divided it a lot. One of those thousand little triangles is going to be the one that hits this center point and causes it to turn on, right? So there might be another hundred in between here, let's do this, another hundred in between here that didn't cause anything to turn on. But the one that covers that spot is going to get it to hit exactly once. So if you subdivide a triangle into a bunch of smaller triangles and draw it, the way the definition works is you should get exactly the same thing on the screen. You shouldn't see any difference in terms of coverage, in terms of the rasterization rules. So this is one of the reasons the rules are set up like this. I wouldn't want it to be true that if I had a bunch of tiny little triangles, I turned this thing on a hundred times because there's a variety of weird effects that would happen from things not being hit the same number of times. So the rules as they're set up mean you'll get them exactly once, regardless of whether you choose bigger or smaller ones. If you choose, the, the way I think you can see the artifact the clearest is this example draw a really thin little triangle on your screen and you'll be able to see what's going on. But if you drew some more thin little triangles next to it, the one next to it might be the one that's covering that, covering that point. So if you've covered the whole space in a sort of mathematically correct way, then you will draw all your pixels. 